Hey everybody, welcome back to this series where I run through um, my prep and my sessions for Curse of Strahd for Shadow Dark. Um, in this, it's just going to be part 9 in this video. I'm going to go through what we did with our session last night, which was really cool, a really fun session. And with the prep I'm going to have to be doing in the in the uh, week to come. I think I'm going to have to do a lot of prep, and um, so I don't think I'm going to do it all on, on camera here. But I'll talk about a little bit of it. So um, the session was really, really cool. We essentially went through um, all the stuff that I had hoped had happened, what was going to happen in the session before, and a lot of it happened over the course of this one. Um, it was a lot of payoff for a lot of setup in a couple of really cool moments in particular. Um, and then afterwards we talked, the players and I talked for a bit, and it's it's very clear they're enjoying it and they're starting to really get into it. Even the player who I thought had kind of, you know, kind of had an off uh, view of things. I think he's really getting into it now. Um, so in the last one, you know, in, in, in session eight, the players had gone to um, the, uh, the Vistani woodlet, had gone to the Vistani camp, had found out that Irina had been there, had been taken away by... Um, by the, the, the faction amongst the, the Vistani who are trying to serve uh, the devil, Strahd, they haven't called him that yet, but the devil, and uh, and she had been taken away. Um, the players had tracked her down, had got with some help from the Vistani in camp that were sympathetic, um, and they had tracked her down to this cabin where they heard these arguments, this argument going on inside the cultists and the, uh, were arguing with the Vistani, the Vistani didn't want to give her up, and the, uh, the cultists were saying, no, we need her, we need her. We need someone of the blood or an heir or something like that. So the players burst in and killed everything. It was kind of an epic moment. There was a lot of cool uh, cool fights, a lot of close calls, but they managed to do it. It was a little less dramatic than I had hoped, but looking back on it, the players seemed to have fond memories of it, and they talked about moments from it, like, really, like, oh, that was really cool when that happened. So I think they, they did enjoy it more than I, I felt at the time. Um, maybe just looking back. Uh, but regardless... It was really enjoyable, this session. So we started off there. The players had Irina. She was drugged. She'd been given a, a kind of a sleeping thing, so she was out. And so the players were free to decide what to do. And and some of them were like, okay, well, we have so many options here. We could go try to find uh, Ismark and the Barovians on the road, try to catch up with them. Um, we could go back to the Vistani camp and try to free that old woman, Madame Eva, in from her tent because they had heard that she was kind of being held captive or that she was in a trance and she had been trapped in that trance for a while. And they were like, well, we could go back there and try to figure that out, or we could go and steal horses and try to get away that way, or we could try to lead, like, a rebellion amongst the Vistani and get some on our side. Um, and then they're like, well, if we go after Ismark, is there any reason for us to find him? Do we even know if that'll happen? Um, one of the things that they found on the body was the map that I'm using for my campaign, and so I just gave them this, this whole map here. Um, and I said, okay, it, as written, everything on it is on it. And they were like, oh no, so there's all these, these creepy symbols written and there's things marked and, oh man. They are like, this is too much information. But they did use it to kind of get a sense of the lay of the land and uh, of where they were going and where they were and what the cult might have found to be important because it was on one of the cultists that they found this map. They are like, okay, so there are, there are certainly locations that are marked. Um, those are obviously important. Uh, they didn't like the star in the circle by the castle. They were like, oh, that's not good. So anyway, they... Uh, they were like, well, we have a lot of options. We could go and investigate one of those. We could go and, like, there's that one that's to the south of us. That's pretty close. We could go and see what that's about. Um, but at the end of the day, they said, no, we said we would catch up to Ismark. We would try to help them. We should at least get them to Velaki. And one of the players was like, yeah, if we can get to Velaki, then we'll probably be able to get supplies um, and all that. So one of the players was like, I don't really know what we do. We don't really have any leads. And one of the other characters was like, what are you talking about? We have nothing but leads. It was kind of funny. Um, and so they uh, they decided ultimately to go south to the road and then follow it and try to catch up with Ismark and the Barovians. So they did that. They basically just left uh, in the woodlet, came down, and then followed the road west for several hours until they met uh, the bridge. By this point, by the time they got to the bridge, it was getting dark. It was like six or seven. And uh, they were like, oh, okay. And I described how the, the road here is kind of a highway that runs along the, the, the edge of the, of the cliffs, the Zerpool. Uh, the Zer Falls are there visible. The mountains are up above them to the west. And to the east, the, the ground kind of slopes down into the forest um, and into the valley of, of Outer Barovia. And so you can see pretty far. And so when the moon is out, because it was a full moon or near a full moon, uh, I was like, well, when you can see out pretty far across the landscape. Uh, but it's very cloudy sometimes, so it kind of goes back and forth. So you can see out over the forests, see the mists everywhere. It's thick and it's dark and all that stuff. Um, 
So then they, they kept going. They pushed on basically right to the edge of the cliffs. And I described how the road winded its way or wound its way up into the cliffs with the you know, switchbacks and the perilous sharp peaks and the, the gullies and gulches and ravines on either side of the road. And, you know, very much uh, Transylvania, very much dark and stormy night. Although it wasn't actually dark and stormy. <laughs> it wasn't raining or, or the wind wasn't howling. It was cloudy, but then the moon would break through. And it was just kind of a an eerie situation. And so they said, well... We know they found signs that the Barovians, Ismark and the other Barovians, had gone ahead of them. And they were like, well, he's probably up ahead somewhere. Um, we could push on and try to get up, catch up with them tonight, but who knows if we'll be able to do so. And it'll be dangerous to go up these switchbacks during the night. Let's just camp out here. Let's just camp out here at the bottom of the cliffs and wait until morning. And, you know, they're, they're going to have camp for the night. There's more of them. They have uh, sick people with them. They have children with them. We'll be able to travel faster. Once especially Irina wakes up, so let's just let's just go tomorrow. So they camped out at night, and they had they found a little uh, overhang where they could kind of hide a little bit out of sight. But they had a clear view of the entire forest of shadow from up above it, because they're higher than it, and they could see out to Barovia and out past the the sunny woodland, and just they could see really far out and about. And so I described the players went to sleep. And so the first two players to go to sleep were Pavel and Varya. And so I said, well, you guys both roll off a wisdom check to see who has it. And so Varya rolled like a 19 and Pavel rolled an 18. It was very close, but Pavel rolled lower. So I had him have a dream. And he had a dream about this old Vistani woman who was reaching out for help. And there was singing in the woods around her and figures dancing behind her in the behind the trees. But whenever she spoke, she howled instead like a wolf. And, uh, and I said that the dream was very vivid and you could you can almost control yourself. And he's like, oh, well, I try to grab her and drag her away, uh, you know, away from all this stuff. And I said, and as you pull her, the, the singing and the howling get louder, but she can't move. And he's like, oh, okay, so she's being held here. And then uh, she, she, he woke up in a sweat, basically. And uh, at midnight, everyone was awake because that was when the transition happened. So Varya woke up because they were going to switch watches. Varya woke up after a sleep, peaceful sleep, and, and he woke up after that kind of less peaceful sleep. <laughs> and so everyone was awake at midnight. So it was perfect. Per so I described how the, uh, the, the moon came out and suddenly it was pretty clear. Stars were out and visible. And suddenly there were these points of light that started to grow from all around them in the valley below, a huge amount of them from Barovia, scattered throughout the landscape, a ton from the Plains of the Dead. And they started to grow brighter and brighter and sort of become these wispy, glowing, ethereal forms. And it's the, uh, I was taking the idea of the procession of the dead that rise up out of the graveyard of Barovia, but I was saying because the players knew that the devil was going to be summoned tonight. That's what the Vistani had said. He's returning tonight. And so they were like, oh man, what does that mean? So at midnight, I had the cult complete at least part of the ritual. And so what that meant was all of these spirits were being drawn up to Barovia, uh, up to Castle Ravenloft. And so I described how these, these ghostly forms from all over the landscape are being dragged almost through the air. They're clawing and tearing, trying to stay away from where they're being pulled. And they're all being pulled towards the broken old ruin spires of Ravenloft because I've been describing this place as a ruin, like very clearly ruined up on the hillside, mountainside. And it's been visible the whole day. They can see it all day, these old ruins brooding down on them. And so then I describe how the, the ghostly forms begin to swirl around the ruined castle. It becomes this bright pillar of ghostly spirits, totally silent. And then there's like a, a movement as the castle begins to rebuild itself. And it starts to, you know, the spires look like they did hundreds of years ago. And suddenly the spirits are pulled inside and it's all dark and quiet. And the castle looks as it did in its prime. And so the castle Ravenloft has been rebuilt. And, and the, the players were like, that is so cool and so terrifying. We are in so much trouble. And I described how they could see the wall of mist like solidify around the land. Far to the east, far to the south, they could see that they were now... And they were like, okay, so we're trapped here now. Barovia has now locked us in. The devil has returned. And they're like, oh no, we're in so much trouble. Um, I think one of them saw a dark shape also fly down to the Vistani Woodlet before that. It had been earlier in the evening. So they saw something fly across the sky, fly across the moon, uh, a large bat-like shape. Like, okay, so there's definitely a, uh, a vampire down there, probably Gertruda, they were assuming. But anyway, nothing else occurred that night. 
In the morning, Irina woke up and she was very ashamed and embarrassed and it wasn't unclear. And she described how she wasn't able to control her anger and that's why she ran off to go, you know, fight the Vistani. And they, they told her that they killed the werewolf who did it to her. They actually didn't. But they killed a werewolf. Uh, they think it was the one who was attacking her. Um, and uh, and so they, uh, they described that to her and so she's very grateful. But then she realized that she had caused a mess because they had had to leave Ismark and the others um, in order to find her. And so she's like, okay, well, we have to find Ismark. I have to apologize. I have to apologize. So the party moved on and they moved up the cliffs. They managed to make it up during the, during the day and they got to where the group was supposed to meet them and they found them. But there was no Ismark and no Doru. And the party was... Uh, Irina asked questions in Barovian and they, they were made to understand that during the night, earlier in the night, they had made camp there. Um, dark figures, cloaked figures from the castle had come and demanded Ismark come with them or they would kill everybody. Now, who is the Burgomaster Barovia? Come with us. You know, identify yourself or we'll kill you and all this stuff. And so, uh, and so he agreed to go with them. And so they took him away and left the people behind. And uh, Doru followed after to try to, you know, do what he could, and neither of them had come back. And so Ismark, like, or Irina just, like, takes off and starts walking straight towards the, the road leading to the castle. And they stop her, and she starts breaking down into tears. She's like, it's my fault, it's my fault, it's my fault. And they're like, yeah, kind of is your fault, but, you know, no use saying that now. So they, they kind of just uh, moved on. Um, so the party decided, okay, we're going to go to, um, we're just going to go to Velaki. Irina wants to go to the castle, but she's kind of in shock now. Because she's, she's realized it's kind of her fault and that her brother is probably dead or worse, and uh, it's her fault. And so Ismark has been taken to Castle Ravenloft, just like I hoped. And it, 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 like after the session, we talked about this, and the players were like, you know, I don't feel that anyone has done anything unreasonable or un... I mean, like, no player or you as a deal, like, no, it, it's always every single step of the way has felt like, yeah, that would happen. Yep, that's going to happen. Yep, that's that makes sense. And so they're like, this... One of the players was like, honestly, if you had let them just all be there fine and Ismark was fine, I would have felt disappointed. Because we made a decision to go find Irina instead of staying in it. If we hadn't had any, like, consequences to that, it wouldn't have felt very good. If they had just all been hunky-dory there, it would have been not, like, we wouldn't have actually made a decision. It would have just been kind of so. So I felt good about that. I was like, yeah, I'm glad then that I had something happen. Ismark was taken. So anyway, they, they followed the road west to Velaki, and I described how once they get out of the mountains and into the valley, inner Barovia, they get a sense of a much more normal environment. There are towns, and you can see houses and, and farms, and it looks like a prosperous region. It's, it's late winter, but or late fall, I should say, but it's, you know, there, there is definitely a harvest that hasn't been collected in places. So things have bad have been happening here too, but it doesn't look as bad as outer Barovia, where everything was desolate and abandoned. But as they got closer to Velaki along the road, I you said, I said, you know, you're, you're you're passing by people, but they're always going the same direction you are. They're always going towards Velaki. There's you know people with carts and people with wagons and people with their families in tow, and it's clear that people are heading to the city. No one seems to be going the other direction. And they're like, okay, so it's refugees. So they got to the city of Velaki, and uh, they realized that yes, in fact, there was a huge long line of people trying to get into the city. There were guards who had been posted outside to like process them and like make them pay to get in and let, you know, like, like it's a really serious problem. Um, and so the players waited their, their, their turn. They got up to the gate and the guard at the gate was like, why are you here? You know, here are the rules of the city. Um, you know, to draw a weapon is punishable by this. If you break any of these laws, you'll be hanged or put in the stocks or like very clearly, we are not happy right now. Things are bad right now. And, uh, and then... The party agreed. They paid their toll to get into the city. They were told that if you draw weapons, you're you're going to be at least put in the stocks. Uh, and if you steal anything or, or commit any kind of violence, then it's hanging. Lose your hands if you steal. Hanging if you uh, if you uh, do violence. And they're like, all right, all right. And then the last thing he says is, and I had described as they were going up, in the second session of the game, if you guys remember that video, Varya had had a dream about a city that she had never seen before, but with very tall buildings that leaned over the streets, and there were signs of festivities that had failed, and banners, and pennants, and that everyone, there were these dark shadows, and then when they came into the light, they had horrible grins on their face. And this one girl bursts through the crowd and grabs her and, and, and shouts kind of in desperation, all is not well. So that had been her nightmare. And that was in the second session, so this is now, what, seven sessions later? Um... I had reminded her about the dream, and I said, "Oh yeah, so you, you, the city looks like it. Even from a distance, you can you 
recognize it. It looks like the one that you saw in your dream. And she's like, oh, okay. So she had it in mind. And then the guard, I said, gave this big fake smile and said, all right, be on your way. And remember, all is well. And the player, uh, the, the one who had had the dream, she was like, no. And she started like, it was so awesome. She Later on, she was like, I haven't had that feeling of surprise and dread in a long time. Because she was like, because I had not forgotten the dream, but I, I had thought it was like symbolic of like Barovia, you know, like, oh yeah, it's uh, everyone's pretending everything's okay. And it was a happy place, but it's ruined. And, and then this one person's like, it's not okay. And she's like, but then to have it actually, she was like, it's like a nightmare that you suddenly realize you're living. It was a horrible moment for the character and, and the player was like, it was so creepy, it was so effective, it was so good. Uh, so I was really happy about that. There were two really strong moments of like, build up and build up and then pay off. There was the build up of uh, something is happening, the devil's coming, the devil's coming, and then those spirits rebuilding the castle and they were like, that's so cool. And then there was this moment for the one player of like, all is not, all is well. And she was like, we have to get out of here, we can't stay, but there's nowhere to go. So she very reluctantly goes into the city and they're like, oh man, this is not a good place. So anyway, uh, they had been told that the, the, the cathedral of St. Andrew um, and the Bishop Lucian are kind of taking care of refugees. And so there are other options. Um, the guard said, well, if you're looking for a place to stay and you have money, the Blue Water Inn is also a good place to go. Um, that's if you have money. And so they know that there are some places in town that they could go, but they decided to go see the cathedral because uh, one of the players, the priest, Ulysses, is like, look, we need help. We need allies. We need information. Perhaps we can see the bishop and perhaps he'll help us. And once uh, they said, oh, yeah, Bishop Lucian, one of the players is like, either he's a great guy or he's, a, or he's evil because his name's Lucian. You know he's either great or evil. Um, and so they went to, uh, they went to see him. And even before they found him, they ran into one of his acolytes. And the acolyte looked at them and was like shocked and surprised and like delighted to see them. And he was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you're here. I, I never believed it. I, I should have, I shouldn't have doubted. And they're like, what? And he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, you, you ha follow me, follow me. The bishop's waiting for you. So they showed him into the, where the bishop was. He's this big bearded Barovian, um, probably not what they were expecting. And they, they run into him. They're like, oh my goodness. Or he was like, oh, I, I, I never doubted it. I never doubted it. I knew you would come. And they were like, who are you? And how do you know we were here? And he's like, I've been praying for help. I've been praying for help. And in my dreams, I have seen you. In my visions, I have seen your faces. I knew you would come. I've, I've told my acolytes to be on the lookout for you, to see you. Um, and they were like, oh, really? And he's like, we have much to discuss. And that was the end of the session. So it was a great, I said, let's lend it right there. One of the players was getting a little tired. I could tell he was kind of like, um, getting ready. I mean, you know, we're, we're all working and um, he had a couple beers. And so he was kind of like, uh, you know, drifting off a little bit, not drifting off, but he was definitely tired. He was starting to, to zone out, but it was really cool. It was really, really cool. Um, and I had a great, great time of it. And I think the players did too. And, and it was just an excellent way of, of getting them to Velaki, which I didn't know if we would do. I wasn't even sure because I they, there was a moment there when they were talking about just staying back at the Vistani camp and causing a rebellion and marching on Castle Ravenloft and stopping the cult. And like that could have been the end of the campaign. Like that could have been it. They could have just marched on Castle Ravenloft and stopped Rahadin and probably fought Strahd when he was not, I would have made him like not quite ready yet or something or not quite summoned fully. And so he'd be a weaker form and they would, it would be, a, yeah, I, I could have done something. But they decided not to. And then they had Ismark, and Ismark had been taken. They're like, oh, we could go storm the castle and try to rescue Ismark without any information, Or, but that's probably not a good idea. So there were many opportunities for them to go other directions, but I'm glad they got to Velaki because now, uh, Velaki is where a lot of the stuff starts to happen, in my opinion, in Curse of Strahd. Now is when they can get information, and I think I'm going to be providing them with a lot of different directions. So Father Lucian's going to tell them about the Order of the Silver Scale, or the Order of the Silver Dragon which is, uh, I took that from um, Sly Flourish's uh, Curse of Strahd idea, which is there's this sort of group of vigilantes who is starting to fight back. Um, so they can find out about that and, and find out about the, uh, the, the headmaster who's gone to find uh, a very powerful artifact from the silver, the old uh, cathedral. And I'm going to make Argon Volstolt up here up in the Silver Valley. It makes the most sense. There's a place in the map called the Valley of the Silver Thread, the Silver Creek, and then there's Silver Valley behind it. So I think Argon Volstolt is actually going to be this place up here. So they're going to have that as a destination they could go where they know there are allies and artifacts. And I think that's where I'm going to put um, uh, two things. I think I might put the Sun Sword in Argon Volstolt. Um, and I think I'm going to put, uh, what's his name? Um, Vladimir Hornscar there. 
I'm going to put them both of them up there. Um, I was thinking about putting Horn, uh, Vladimir somewhere else, but I think that makes the most sense. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure about that, because I might just make the Order of the Silver Scale going up that way. Um, so maybe I'll just do that. I'm going to introduce the idea of the Were Ravens, And I'm going to say there's only a handful of them. They're not like spread throughout the whole valley, but there are a handful of them. But they are the ones that are engaged with the Witch. And I'm going to talk about Jenny Greenteeth. So that's another thing that has been added from online. I'm going to have Jenny be someone who lives in Vlaki so they can talk to her. Um, and, and she's going to tell them about uh, probably something like... Um, I'm not sure. But they're going to find out about the, obviously, the stuff happening in town and that there are these two factions and one of them seems to be uh, corrupted a bit. The, 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 the you know, Vargas, Velakovich. He seems to be going crazy or something. And then there are those who oppose him amongst the nobility and some of them uh, are, are trying to undermine him. And of course, Fiona Wachter is one of them and even Father Lucian, or Bishop Lucian, doesn't know that Fiona is a, uh, is a cultist. So they might get in contact with Stella Wachter and uh, take that route and try to try to help establish a political revolution in Velaki and help her. So like this is where stuff can really start to happen. They can get information. They can find out about the abbot of St. Markovia and they'll find out what's going on in the city of Kresik. And I think what's happening there is that the Vistani and the werewolves are having some real real problems. The, the Duke or the Count of Kresik or whatever he is, um, the Burgomaster of Kresik has gone crazy and is causing trouble there and maybe there's a reason to go out there to get the, the Abbey of St. Markovia and get help there. They might find rumors about Esmeralda uh, and uh, about uh, Van Richten. So this really now things have opened up and, and with, with Lucian and with them exploring the town of Alaki, the city of Alaki, I'm making it more of a big city or like a small city, like a big town or a small city than it is in the book. Um, but with them being now able to, uh, to kind of have a breather and not to say that there's going to be no danger because, of course, the vampires are loose. The devil's back. Strahd is back. And so now things are going to start to escalate. Now more than Gertruda, there are going to be more vampires than Gertruda. And so there are going to be start to be attacks in the streets of Velaki at night where people are taken by vampires and stuff. And so it's going to start, you know, Velaki is going to be a dangerous place, but not at first. It's going to escalate there. Um, but, but again, now I have options for how to direct them. They can find out. I can send them to Argon Volstolt. I can send them against Babel Saga. I can send them to the Yester Hill and the Yester Tree and the Wizard of Wines. I can send them to the Abbey of St. Markovia. Um, I can send them to the Tower uh, at Bartok, Lake Bartok, and have uh, Esmeralda and um, Rictavio there. I can create my own adventures and have them do things like that. So, like, now, now we're much more in a standard, in my view, a standard sandbox than we were before. Before, it was a movement of, like, okay, we got to get from Barovia to Velaki. And it was a slow movement over that direction. Very often, as I mentioned in another video, um, in, in, I've run Curse of Strahd up to Velaki at least three times. I've never really gotten past Velaki, so this will be kind of interesting. I've, I've gotten to Velaki like three times. But the first two times we ran it, they went basically straight there within session one or two. They were rushing for Velaki. And this time it's session, what, nine? Before they get to Velaki? Yeah, nine sessions before they get to Velaki. So really, this has been a slow burn. Um, it's only been in character like five days, but the players have, you know, it's been a couple months. And so we're finally at the lucky now that I'm going to give them a breather. They're going to be able to get weapons and supplies and information and allies. One of the things that's been very clear is any time, any time they've run across somebody who is at all competent or at all useful, there's like almost a sigh of relief from the party because so far everybody has been weak or corrupt or uh, secretly evil or, you know, it's like, it's, it's, Barovia is not a happy place. And so um, I'm going to try to provide them with good, solid people. Like Bishop Lucian is going to be good. I'm not making him corrupt or evil. I'm going to make him a good guy. Doesn't mean he's going to survive, but I'm going to make him good. Uh, Stella Vachter, if they can wake her up, is is a good person. I'm going to make her some sort of like, um, I don't think I'll make her a magic user, but she's something that would be helpful and good and, and, and useful. Um, I'm going to add in, I think, Esmeralda pretty soon. I want them to meet Esmeralda really pretty soon. They're, they're going to hear a rumor, perhaps, about a monster hunter uh, who's out west somewhere. Um, maybe Esmeralda is the one going after Baba Lusaga. Because then they're going to start hearing about the witches. And Yester Hill and the Wizard of Wines. And how uh, Esmeralda and the... I think that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to have Esmeralda and the, um, and the uh, were-ravens dealing or trying to deal with the witches that are growing in the western part of Barovia. And then I think at some point, 
Um, if and it depends on how long the campaign goes and which of these threads they take up. They're already level four. They leveled up to level four last night. Now level five will take them a while. At that point, they have to get a lot of experience. So level five will take them quite a while to get. They just got to four. But at four, well, one of my players, Pavel, he he got an insane amount of hit points. So he is now sitting really pretty for hit points. He's going to be very hard to kill him. Um, so they can take some some serious stuff if Pavel gets in the front and starts taking hits and. He's got 10 armor class, but he's got a lot of hit points. And uh, so, especially with the, the cleric's ability to heal, got getting better now. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's really going to be, uh, they're a much stronger party. So I think I can throw a lot more at them than I, other, than I otherwise could. So they can start to do a bit more interesting adventures, a bit more interesting dungeon uh, encounters and all that stuff. So I think that'll be it for this video. I'm not going to go through all of my prep. Um, Really, that's just too much I have to do because I have to now really work on Velaki. I've been putting off working on Velaki because I didn't know when they were going to come here. So I have a few ideas and I have the book itself and, and my experience of reading through it. So I kind of came up with a couple of things on the fly last night. But, um, and, and basing off my memory of the, of the, the town. But I'll have to detail it in, in my, own, my own time. I'll probably do that this weekend. I don't think I'll, I'll make a video of it. I'll probably talk about it in my next prep video or my next session video or something like that. Um, but what I am going to know, what I'm going to work on this week is I'm going to make Velaki and the NPCs and make sure I know them. I'm going to try to make sure I get the Velakoviches, Father Lucian, the Order of the Silver Scale, and uh, the Wachters. And then I also want to make sure I know the uh, the Martikovs. Um, and then I'll try to throw in some interesting little tidbits and other things they can they can follow up on. If they do find out about the blue, they go to the blue water inn. They can find out about Esmeralda and the Wizard of Wines. Maybe they'll find out about the Abbey, uh, the Abbot of Saint Markovia, who is a, a living saint, a reputed living saint. And uh, of course, he is horribly crazy and, and mad now, and he's looking for a perfect offering for the the devil who is returning, so that he, uh, he the devil will leave the Abbey alone. And he's creating a uh, a flesh golem. And I think, if if at all possible, I want him to try to use uh, um, Irina as the uh, like the, the life force and transfer it from the one to the other body or something like that. Um, and I think that'll be uh, pretty cool. So somehow I want Irina to end up at the Abbey of St. Markovia. I don't know how that's going to happen. But maybe, maybe it'll be like the safest place. Maybe that's where people will decide and so they'll send them all up there to, to, to Kresik and to the Abbey of St. Markovia. And then... Um, that's one thing, because they asked, uh, they, they want to ask Irina if she knows anybody in town, and she does. She has a couple contacts, and so one of them might be a noblewoman, a friend of Irina, who's like, look, I'm fleeing to the Abbey of St. Markovia. Uh, it's it's where things are safe. Um, I have family there. My brother is, an, is a monk there, something like that, so we're going to go there. Uh, I am happy to take you along. And so they might send, you know, that would be one way of getting Irina out, so that Irina and her noble friend leave and go to the Abbey. And then later on, the players find indication that the abbot is mad. And they're like, oh no, if we have to, we have to go rescue Irina or not, right? So I think that'll be a moment. But anyway, this is all speculation. Right now, I just need to make sure that I provide a bit of a sandbox for them now and give them an opportunity to get a breather and to get supplies and information. Because up to this point, they have been running on very limited supplies and very limited information uh, with no real allies. So next session is all about establishing them with a sense of security, catching their breath, They've had nine sessions of kind of being on the back foot. I want them to finally feel like they have caught their breath before I, you know, then sucker punch them and try to take all of their stuff away again. Because <laughs> I will do that. But I want to give them a moment of respite, right? Uh, so, brief though it may be. All right. Well, I hope this has been interesting to you guys. I know I didn't really do any prep in this one. But, um, yeah, I'm certainly going to keep doing these for as long as people keep watching them. And... Uh, and uh, as long as the campaign keeps going, which at this point doesn't seem like it's going to stop. I had wondered if people were going to lose interest after Halloween, but uh, at least at least all my players seem to be only getting more and more invested as we go through, which is good because, again, as I said, last session was really low energy and, uh, and a bit, you know, slow. And this one was certainly not low energy or slow, uh, even though we didn't have a fight. All right. Well, I'll let you guys all go. I'll see you in another video.